In our previous video, we have introduced a boat that can help you in learning a new language like Japanese. The boat helps to perform translation and can even verify your pronunciation. To achieve that, the bot actually makes use of three AI applications. In this video, we shall dive deeper into the first application, which is text-to-speech, and explore how lifelike speech can be created. If you pause and think for a moment on how you can perform text-to-speech, you will probably formulate a method that is very similar to what is called the concatenative approach. For example, suppose we would like to produce the speech for the word hello. The concatenative approach will first perform a phonetic transcription of the word into units called phonemes. So in this case, we have four phonemes and each phoneme has its own unique pronunciation. Three of them like the alphabets, except that they represent sounds. Let's listen to each of these four phonemes. Now, let's concat the sounds together. This is of course our crude attempt at concatenating these sounds, just to illustrate the idea. And concatenative speech produced professionally definitely sounds better. In English, there are approximately 44 phonemes as shown in this chart. It is therefore not hard to imagine that if we could keep a dictionary of words with their corresponding phonetic scripts, we can perform text-to-speech with just 44 phoneme recordings. However, although we have technically solved text-to-speech in this way, the speech output is far from natural sounding. Using our approach described earlier, the word right will sound the same in the sentences are you alright and you are right. These two rights sound different in tone and perhaps we can improve by adding intonation transcriptions and corresponding recordings. And the speech may become increasingly lifelike. But you can easily imagine a whole lot of other scenarios where the same word can sound differently. The extremely large number of variations hence renders the concatenative approach unwieldy. In that case then, how can we produce lifelike speech? In September 2016, DeepMind introduced WaveNet, a deep learning model that could generate audio waveforms. This pioneer approach produces much more natural sounding speech, and blind tests with US English and Mandarin should WaveNet outperforming Google's best text-to-speech systems. Let's listen to a sample by WaveNet. The Blue Lagoon is a 1980 American romance and adventure film directed by Randall Kleiser. Currently, Google's text-to-speech API is powered by WaveNet, and you can experiment with it yourself on Google Cloud's website. To understand how WaveNet was able to achieve the breakthroughs, let's first understand how audio is represented digitally. In digital audio, a sound wave is represented as a time series, with the y-axis representing the amplitude or volume of audio. Raw audio is typically stored as a sequence of 16-bit integer values. This means there are 2 to the power of 8, which is 65,536 possible values. The speech model therefore has to output a value out of one of these 65,000 values. At each time unit, the model generates an output value, and these outputs together form the audio recording. Perhaps you may start to wonder, how does a value of say 30,000 sound different from 29,999? And you are right, to a normal human ear, these two values are not going to sound different. And the 65,000 possible values will pose an unnecessary burden on the model training. Therefore, WaveNet performs a non-linear quantization of the target's output. In other words, the 65,000 values are grouped into a smaller number of bins based on a formula. This will then reduce the number of unique values to 256 quantized values, making it much more manageable for the model. The other thing that we observed is that the nature of sound waves as time series also means that each sample is dependent on past samples. So for example, if the model is to predict the value of this orange point, then it makes sense for the model to look back at past samples to estimate the prediction value. This issue is also complicated by the fact that each second of a speech recording 
typically consists of at least 16,000 sample points. This means that the model has to consider a large number of past samples to make a prediction. To address the issue, WaveNet uses dilated causal convolutions, which is also its main unique feature. Essentially, the inputs pass through the model in the pattern shown, and only the past inputs are used to predict the current output. For those of you who know of convolutions, this pattern is similar to a convolution of Strat2. And by stacking the dilated convolutions to a number of layers, the network can then have a large receptive field while preserving computational efficiency. When generating with the model, the predictions are sequential. After each sample is predicted, it is fed back into the network to predict the next sample. During model training, the linguistic features embedding are also fed to each of the layers so that the model can learn how to produce speech from text. These embeddings are essentially numerical representations of linguistic features such as phonemes that were mentioned earlier. And so, these are some of the tricks that WaveNet used to produce lifelike speech. And if you would like to find out more details about WaveNet, do check out the original paper and its link is provided in the description box. As for how we can implement the WaveNet model, well, you may be disappointed to know that besides the API, there's no official release of the model by DeepMind. There are, however, repositories of the WaveNet model released by kind souls who tried to replicate the model based on reading the paper. We can use these public repositories of the WaveNet model, or we can go one step further. That's because, since WaveNet was released, there are now other better models that have built upon the research by WaveNet, which we hope to go through in future. We can also easily implement these models through the use of public repositories, the link of which has also been placed in the description box. Feel free to play with the user-friendly Colab notebooks first. And so hopefully, this video has shed some light on how human-like speech is produced from text, and in our next videos, we shall dive into the other AI applications like speech recognition and language translation. See you next time.